that is my thought, Scott. <laughs> just, uh, just a reminder, uh, I'm reminded. Uh, you, I think you were given a couple of pages like go for it. So we'll start, be starting off with a question for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna quote GK Chesterton, then I'm gonna ask the question. So it is capitalism that has forced a moral feud and a commercial competition between the sexes, that has destroyed the influence of the parent in favor of the influence of the employer, that has driven men from their homes to look for their jobs, that has forced them to live near their factories or their firms instead of near their families, and above all, that has encouraged, for commercial reasons, all that was called dignity and modesty by our mothers and fathers. So my question is, can a system therefore be called ethical if, as a consequence, it drastically perverts priority, spurring the destruction of family life by institutionalizing the pursuit of wealth over community, decreasing the amount of time parents spend with their children, and eradicating the virtue of humility by idealizing greed? Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, <laughs> children. How many children before capitalism lived to see the age of 10? You want to talk about time with children? Before capitalism, what did children, the ones who survived, 50% didn't reach the age of 10. The ones who survived, what did they do? How many children went to school in the pre-capitalist world? How many? Almost none. Maybe the aristocrats. But almost 90 plus percent of children worked in the fields. From day in, from uh, uh, sun up to sunset. What time did the parents have with children? Parents were exhausted. Parents often died young. Women often, often died of childbirth. I mean, how many women today child die in childbirth? Almost none. It's very close to zero. That wasn't the case not that long ago. So no, nothing has enhanced the family more than capitalism. Indeed, I don't know that there was the concept, the concept as a broad concept among everybody in society, not among the people we make movies about, the, 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 the aristocrats who, yeah, they had plenty of family time. But nothing has promoted family more than capitalism because it makes it that kids stay alive, that you have time. I mean, we have more leisure time today than people worked back then. I mean, restaurants. Anybody know when the first restaurant came into being? First restaurant. I mean, real restaurant, not, not a, 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 at a lodge where you slept and also ate, but something where you went out just to eat and experience uh, some uh, gourmet chef's cooking. Anybody know when the first restaurant was created? Because restaurants are modern. When was the first restaurant? It was, it was the, the, the late, the late 1800s. The late, the late 1700s, so the late 18th century, um, uh, in Paris, first restaurant ever. People didn't have time or money or wealth to go to eat at a restaurant. I eat five times a week at a restaurant today. Literally, my wife won't cook. So we eat out all the time. Vacations. So restaurants are completely modern phenomena, completely a phenomenon of capitalism. There was no going out to eat. There was no that experience of eating gourmet food or eating different types of food. I mean, the idea that you in Paris can get Japanese food and Thai food and Chinese food and African food and all this stuff, that's completely a phenomenon of globalization and capitalism, not a phenomenon of anything else. Vacations. How many of you guys have been on a vacation? Everybody here has been on a vacation. In France, you basically live your life around <laughs> August, when you can go on vacation. There was no such thing as vacations. There were no hotels. There were no resorts. There were no swimming pools. You, you basically worked every single day. And you stayed at a lodge when you traveled somewhere because you had to travel somewhere, not because you were going on vacation. Vacation is a concept, again, a modern concept, and a product of capitalism. Nothing else? We'll get to your questions, I promise. How, I, is, that, how is that a product? How is it a product of capitalism? Vacation is a product of wealth. You have to have enough leisure time. That is, you have to be so productive as to be able to, in eight hours, uh, build, create, make enough so that you can live and then have extra above and beyond that to pay for a restaurant, 
and take some time off so you don't have to work every single day. You can only work five days a week. All of that is a consequence of increased productivity. It's a consequence of the fact that today I in an hour can produce what somebody in the past took a month or two months to produce. That is completely a product of capitalism. That is a product of the industrial revolution, the freedom that came about during that period and the dramatic increase in the productivity of labor over the last 200 years. And, and, and that productivity of labor only increases in capitalist, in relatively capitalist societies, a society that has a little bit of capitalism. Freedom is a prerequisite for the increase in the productivity of labor. You don't see productivity in labor increase in societies that are not at least somewhat capitalist. So vacations, restaurants are completely a product, a result of the fact that capitalism is so good at creating wealth. Because you can't have any of that without wealth. We'd still be farming. Not to mention the fact that we have, how many, how many people do we have on planet Earth? Eight billion people? You couldn't feed eight billion people on planet Earth without capitalism? You couldn't. Without industrial farming, you cannot feed eight billion people in the world. Suddenly you haven't been able to. You wouldn't have been able to over the last 50, 60 years. Every aspect of human life today is possible at the level in which we live it because we, we have maintained just a little bit enough capitalism to keep us going. And the more we diminish it, the more we put that lifestyle at risk and the more we decay. So all of the values that we care about, I mean, think about, so I love classical music. I assume some of you probably do, maybe not, I don't know. You're young, maybe you don't, right? Even classical music, think about classical music, right? When was the first time a composer could actually make a living from his composition and not be dependent on some religious leader or aristocrat to fund him completely? When did this happen? Right, because today musicians can, you know, they can, they can make money directly from us. They don't need a patron. When did that start? When did the patronage system disappear? Well, it's the same thing with the beginning of capitalism. Beethoven has concerts and he sells tickets and people come to listen to Beethoven concerts and he makes money off of those concerts and he makes a living that way. He also had patrons because he, he was the transitional figure, but he makes money off of a new middle class, a middle class that's being created by what? By the introduction of capitalism by the introduction of industry. And suddenly people can afford, people can afford to buy sheet music. People can afford to take piano lessons. And suddenly music teachers, that profession never existed. Suddenly you have this proliferation of music teaching. Every aspect of culture, every aspect of family is enhanced by capitalism, not degraded by it.